So if you take a look at the last few GPU generations, there's more performance, but for a lot more power and a lot more money. And that doesn't look to be changing for what's coming next. Today I want to discuss some of the leaks that have been popping up for the RTX 4000 series. I've been getting a ton of questions about thermal requirements, the huge power numbers that we're seeing, and just what this means in general for the kind of PCs that I build and I kind of lean towards. Now, of course, these are just rumors and leaks, you know, stuff that I don't typically report on but they have been pretty consistent over the past few months and they all point in the same direction so I do think we have a pretty confident sense of what's going to happen in the next few months. You know maybe not down to the minute details and specs but at least the overall direction. So let's start there. Nvidia's RTX 4000 is rumored to be running on a custom TSMC 4 nanometer process appropriately named TSMC 4N and next gen at this point will go under the name Ada Lovelace. Now the number 4 in 4 nanometer doesn't really tell us much these days. It doesn't refer to any physical node pitch or measurement like it used to, but for what it's worth, we can definitely expect denser silicon and naturally more transistors than ever in a gaming GPU. And as usual, some of you are probably tired of hearing me say this, but it's gonna be the high-end stuff coming out first. So RTX 4090, 4080, 4070 is what is expected to be the first three cards coming out to kind of kick things off, just as we had the 3090, 3080, and 3070 for the 30 series. So if you're looking forward to a 4060, 4050, definitely don't expect those until next year at least. Now surprisingly, the RTX 4080 is expected to use a completely different GPU to the 4090 this time around, not as with the 3080 which is essentially a cut down 3090, both using the GA102 GPU. That's reflected in the number of CUDA cores separating them as well, as we've seen performance wise the 3090 and 3080 aren't that different, but this time around there's expected to be a massive difference in compute power between the 4090 and 4080. These leaks from videocards.com suggest a colossal 60% increase in the number of streaming multiprocessors and CUDA cores over the 4080. Not only that, but a huge memory uplift as well. The 4090 is expected to use the same memory configuration as this generation's RTX 3090 Ti, whereas the 4080 is expected to get a relative downgrade. Now that would be very surprising if true, extremely unusual to see a downgrade in video memory between GPU generations, but if 4080 performance is higher than expected, it does leave room in the tank for NVIDIA to release, say, a 4080 Ti or a 4080 Super with primarily a juiced up memory configuration. As for the suggested 4070, it's about what you would expect. A generous CUDA core bump over the current 3070 with the GDDR6 memory config overall not looking too different. Overall though, it's looking pretty interesting to kick things off. If this is how things are going to play out, there will be considerable performance uplifts over current gen, especially if that rumored 4090 spec is accurate, although the quoted TDP and power consumption numbers are a bit odd. I mean, take a look at the 4090, for example, for such a huge increase in the amount of silicon over the 4080, the 4090 will definitely pull a bunch more power. That is unless the 4080 is running considerably higher clock speeds, which are much less efficient. But yeah, I would expect a lot more than 30 watts between them. But just how realistic though are those expected power numbers? I mean, you take a look at the 4090 and what that's expected to pull that's plus 100 watts over the current 3090 and then you know plus 100 watts again for the 4080 even the 4070 is plus 50 watts over the current 3070. To be honest it's not too unrealistic I mean you take a look at what Nvidia have invested to something like this okay completely different you know thermal design to what we were using before much more you know dense space efficient and power capable power connectors putting two and two together looking at what nvidia is currently doing and also the pretty consistent leaks i'd say that those expected power numbers are pretty accurate and to be honest if we see plus 500 watts plus even maybe 600 watt gpus coming out in the near future i would not be too surprised i mean we already have evgas for the win 3 3080s for example which has a v bias that can go up to 450 watts and it can actually hit that their 3090 ti's have v biases as well up to 550 watts again that's current gen that's 3090 ti 3090 as well around the 500 watt mark for some of these factory overclocked aftermarket cards so looking at these power numbers it's not too unrealistic that we're going to kind of see 4080s and 4090s probably hitting that mark again upwards of 600 watts is probably not unrealistic now with that kind of power draw probably forget an sfx power supply at least the ones that are out there on the market today popular enthusiast models like the corsair sf750 platinum which have survived like an rtx 
630-90, no problem. They will finally meet their maker if we're talking about 600 watt GPUs, and you'll likely need some serious GPU undervolting to even make the 850 watt models work. This also means that finally, those that splurged out on a 1000 watt plus ATX power supply a few years ago, which made no sense at the time, that will actually make sense with these kind of loads. In fact, considering the potential transient spikes in power draw, which Gamers Nexus did a great video on recently, a decent 1000 watt power supply for an RTX 4080 or 4090 seems like a logical pairing at minimum. But then there's the discussion of thermal performance. More power equals more heat. If you've got a full mesh mid tower with a large volume of air passing through, then you're probably fine. But closed panels, limited airflow from cases a few years ago, that's not looking like a very fun setup. Now, this isn't even considering that the graphics card designs themselves will be a good deal larger. Current 3090 Ti models, which are rated for 450 to 500 watts, are three to four slots in thickness. So, I mean, just take a look at those. That's roughly what you can expect if you're interested in a 4080 or higher. Now, as most of you know at this point, I am a bit of an ITX fanboy. I love my compact PCs, and even for my own system running a 3090 and a 12900K, very high-end component, I have been able to make that setup work and stick with my compact PCs. Granted, I do need a pretty overkill liquid cooled setup to keep that nice and quiet, but you get the picture. ITX still has been possible even with the highest components on the market. Looking ahead though, I'm not so confident that we can keep having that approach, you know, that no compromise ITX approach. Uh, I do think with RTX 4000 that if you want to build something under 20 liters, you will have to compromise to some degree when it comes to performance. Now there are a couple of liquid cooled ITX builds that I've done which have comfortably handled upwards of a 350 watt GPU. Noise levels weren't too bad, cooling was pretty decent, but beyond 300 50 watts, you're going to really need to crank up the fan speed. I mean, 450, 500 watts, even after undervolting, you're still looking at a lot of heat load being dumped into your PC, liquid cooled or not. It's going to be really interesting to see how board partners adapt their cooler designs and how the reality plays out. It's said that the AD102 and AD103 GPUs, so RTX 4090 and 4080, it's expected that those will use the same PCB layout as what we currently have, so ideally, we'll still be working with those nice compact water blocks. Then in terms of what you can expect when it comes to performance, there's actually not a whole lot to go off. The video memory specs as we saw are almost identical to current gen. There's a decent bump in CUDA cores which should indicate at least 20% performance gains for the 4080 and 4070, but even that's not a whole lot to go off. I actually think the most interesting spec to read into here is the TDP. And basically what I mean here is that if Nvidia are so confident to take the RTX 4080 and juice it up 100 watts over the RTX 3080, which would represent roughly a 30% power increase, then you should expect at least that when it comes to performance. Now, a 30% increase in performance is actually quite noticeable. At that point, the experience does become noticeably smoother. It's like going from 100 FPS to 130 FPS or 60 FPS to roughly like 80 FPS or so. It's also interestingly enough about the same performance difference that you'll see between a 2080 Ti and a 3080 for roughly a 28% increase in power. So if Nvidia are going for a similar increase in power, then a similar performance jump at minimum over the 3080 is pretty comfortable to assume in my opinion. Now it's not worth spending too much energy and time getting caught up about the specs and the details and the projected performance gain at this point, we're still about three to four months out from expecting any kind of announcement from Nvidia, which they could delay further if they wanted. Similar story when it comes to the pricing, there's absolutely nothing to go off just yet, but I think it's safe to say that with the current rate of inflation and the kind of new standard that's been set for the GPU pricing, there's only one direction that the MSRPs are heading and that's up. Having said that, the GPU market is in a bit of a healthier position this time around. Current gen GPUs are closer to MSRP than ever before, crypto prices are tanking pretty hard, and a lot of the gamers that have upgraded to a 30 series GPU in the past one to two years are pretty unlikely to upgrade again. Not only because they probably had to fork out quite a bit of cash for that particular upgrade, but also because the performance of current gen GPUs are really, really good. And I've spoken to a couple of people actually, people in the Discord, people who, you know, are close friends who have upgraded to 3070s, 3080s, 3090s, etc. And they just have zero appetite for any of these upcoming GPUs, whether it's RTX 4000 or RDNA 3. 
you know, do we really need to be playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 200 FPS? Do we really need to be enabling all of these ray tracing settings to ultra? I mean, we're kind of at the point now where if you have a 30 series GPU or an RDNA 2 GPU and you want to see any benefit from upgrading to what's coming next, then you'll probably need to upgrade also your monitor because I don't think the experience is going to be that different for most people's setups. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm personally very excited to see what an RTX 4080 or 4090 will look like in the next few months and the challenges that will come with that, you know, installing it in my own PC, for example. But I can't help but feel that people who might be on 10 series GPUs or 20 series cards or AMD cards from the same generation might also be looking to, say, the used market and picking up a nice discounted 3070 or something similar. So those are my rough thoughts on where things are headed and you know what we can expect in the near future when it comes to GPUs uh, I'd love to know your thoughts as well down below so if you're keen on these GPUs maybe you held out on the current stuff due to inflated pricing or poor availability if so let me know down below as always a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one